that I want to be standing. I just want to be dancing. I don't know if it's the heat. It was a beautiful day out there. Today is July 1st. I'm so happy, as always, to be back going live, streaming live on the internet. That's kind of exciting. We have people who are watching the show in Japan, in England, in Argentina. I was so happy when I read it on Facebook. I got a couple messages. A friend of mine in England who's checking the show in France and in Japan, in Argentina as well. So that's very exciting. Very exciting. I'm happy to have my guest here, a very accomplished actor, singer, comedian, all in one, Kimberly Faye Greenberg. Did I say it right? You did. Thank you I for did. Me. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you for coming by. One word to my sponsors, of course not. George Santana, do not kill me. I'm doing my job properly. The Mikos, the best Italian specialties. I can smell the coffee. I can still taste it. And Rich, I love you. Madonna's Brothers Bakery, I got the breadsticks. I cannot eat them before the show because they're your teeth. A little hard, so there's no way I can do that, but I enjoy them very much. Fluff and Star Quinton Bailey, hopefully I'm going to see you next week. I'm going to be waiting for you next week. I want to have some goodies. Okay. Caterina Lankova, you like the shirt? I'm dressing the part. I feel like Katie Couric tonight. <laughs> I feel a little good. Oh, she's not. I'm a little too edgy, but look at the color. You see? Kimberly? Yeah, it looks great. Like a vampire. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, boy. And of course, I'm bragging with my hair. Who made it happen? Who made this miracle? Bruno Salon and Spa. Thank you, baby. I love you. I love my girls. Makeup, Kathy, the hair. You rock, baby. You made it happen. I am a new woman. Okay, so now that we said it, for a July weekend, we have Kimberly here in the house. Very incredible, remarkable to read what I was reading about oh, you. Thank you. You have two, the only actress in New York who's doing two musicals, two, two leads. Yes, two leading roles. Two leading roles. Two legit in two different legit off-Broadway musicals. Can you hear that? And can you repeat that again, Kimberly? Because that doesn't happen every single day. Okay, so I'm the first and only actress in New York right. currently performing leading roles in two different off-Broadway legit musicals. That's a lot of words. Yeah, that is a lot of words. <laughs> <laughs> One night with Fanny Bryce. With Fanny Bryce. Okay. And Danny and Sylvia. And Danny and Sylvia. The Danny K musical. Okay, yeah. we talk, can we talk about that? How sure. you get cast? Study. How on earth are you doing two musicals at the same time? Well, it's something I never thought I would be doing. Uh, I think no in any, I think any actor is appreciative usually when they have one job, but right, nonetheless one two. Yeah, right. exactly. Um, but I, they kind of fed off one another. I, I was, I've been doing Danny and Sylvia off Broadway for three years now. So we just celebrated our third year, and um, actually, the writer of One Night with Fanny Bryce, Chip DeFoss, saw me do Sylvia in Danny and Sylvia about a year ago, and that's how he found me and approached me and asked if I knew anything about Fanny. And I said, of course, I've been studying her. I want to play her in Funny Girl, because uh -huh. I, I love Funny Girl. Of course. And, um, Beautiful movie. Oh, my God. Barbara is fantastic, she of course. You see how <laughs> Barbara. Barbara. If only we I can meet one day. <laughs> I love her. I love her. She, I cannot get over Barbara Streisand. I would never will. <laughs> and so, you, so he saw you. He and, saw me. Uh, and, and, and then you got casted, just and like yeah, that. Yeah, well, we did. We, we workshopped the show, which is usually the normal um, route uh, a new show would take. Mm -hmm. I read through the show. We workshopped it. Um, we and, and then it was a waiting game of finding out if somebody would want to actually produce it and open the show. Right. And um, that's the key. Yeah, that's the that key. is the key. And and, and fortunate for us, uh, my producer with Danny and Sylvia was very interested in doing the show, and we ended up putting it up there. And and now that's so I'm doing that show as well at the same time. And and what it's a one woman show all about Fanny taking her from the time she was a teenager all the way through her death and and. Um, um, with all of the songs that she made famous that were part of her repertoire. 24 so, songs? 24 songs. How do you do it? I know. Uh, a lot How of stamina and a lot of sleep. A lot of sleep. <laughs> you sleep good at night? How many hours? Uh, Kimberly, every day? I, I try to sleep eight hours. Eight hours. Now, I don't know if that always happens, but... Yeah. yeah, twenty-four songs. Twenty-four songs G plus all the all the scenes because it's a two-hour full musical. Meaning it's not just me. It's just not a cabaret act. It's just not me getting up there and performing right. some of her songs. It's it's me talking about her life as Fanny, and I bring in all the characters that came in and out through her life: uh, Nick Arnstein, um, Billy Rose, Flo Ziegfeld, uh, her her parents. I talk about all these different people coming in and out of her life. How did people responded to this show? Oh my gosh. 
the response has been completely overwhelming. And that's the funny thing is you never know what's going to happen when you open a new show, how people are going to like it. Right. And especially with something like this, uh, people are very familiar with Funny Girl and right. Barbara Streisand. And of they're course. very familiar with her portrayal. But our show is, is not, it's not Barbara and it's not Funny Girl. It's and you. It, it's me. Kimberly. Yes. You. But it's Star also Wars. the real, it's more of a realistic version of Fanny Bryce. Right. Funny Girl is a very watered down version. It's very, it's almost a love letter to Fanny. But right. this really this shows. This one is more. Uh, the true, the yeah. true woman. The true realistic Behind woman. Behind that, that exactly. place. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's fun for you when, when you're doing it. Oh my gosh. It's really fun because it's constantly me talking to the audience. Okay. So um, I've never quite, I've done a lot of like cabaret, maybe 20 minute shows in my lifetime, but I've never done a full two hours. Um, just me on stage with the audience. It's, How does it, it feel? It's, it's really fun. It's very scary. From an, scary uh, it's scary, but, uh, but um, I think it's the most rewarding thing I've probably ever done in my entire life. Right before you go on stage, you feel those, all those butterflies. Oh, yeah. You it, do. Yeah, it's, well, more risk because it's by yourself on the well, stage. Well, exactly, and you never know what the audience is going to do. Some nights, audiences are laughing all the so time. Not, Some uh, nights, they're very quiet. Right. You oh, just the truck never know. Silence. You never know what they're thinking. No. And you better not think about that. Exactly. Even for a second, because exactly. then you're done. Exactly. Right? That's the trick. That's, That's the, the trick. trick. You cannot, it's for the audience, but it's not for them. Yes, you exactly. Know, if you're trapped, you're done. Right. You're dead. Right. Your story. Right. Your history. Your story. <laughs> I already forgot. <laughs> Kaput. Done. <laughs> Finished. Done. Finished. Finito. <laughs> Capici. What about the other, the other musical? Uh, Danny and Sylvia is actually a two-person musical. Okay. And that's about Danny Kay. Um, so I'm doing kind of two um, historically very uh, people-driven musicals. That's where I play Sylvia Fine, which was Danny Kay's wife. And she was very much the person who kind of helped propel Danny to stardom. She wrote a lot of his music. She was his... Um, manager, his agent, his lawyer, his accompanist. Um, Can you do that in a relationship? Songs. Can you be all that in one single relationship? You know, they did. They had that. That's and what they, they had. It, and they pull it off. They did pull it off. Well, I don't know about that. They did pull it off. But, you know, as, as time progressed, most people know that Sylvia was, of course, his wife, but they, a lot of people don't know all the influence that um, he, she had over him. So that's kind of what they find interesting about our, our show itself, is they learn a lot about Sylvia and how that, that influenced him. Now, doing the two shows, how do you manage? Um, I, I mean, I want to hear about, you know, how do you do it? It's a little crazy. There, right. like, there are some days where um, uh, there, the shows have a bit of a different schedule, obviously, because I can't be doing both at the same time. Time or right. I'd be a crazy person. But um, there are some days where I will do Fanny and literally a half an hour later go and do Danny and Sylvia. And uh, that never gets confusing. It, it never be one song to the other show and vice versa. Well, it happens uh, uh, that has not happened yet. Okay, thank goodness. Keep our fingers crossed. Knocking on wood. Yes. Uh, hopefully it doesn't. No, it will um, never happen. I'm uh, just kidding. <laughs> but but uh, it's, it's a little crazy. It's the biggest challenge. It's it so is. fun. It's, it's like that's but a whole other challenge. Kimberly, you got the talent, Kimberly. You got the talent, maybe. You got the <laughs> Tops. You've done what it takes. <laughs> Not everybody can do what you're doing. Not okay. every actor can do what you're doing. Thanks. And thanks. You're blushing. There's no reason to blush. <laughs> okay, so now working, what's next after these two shows? Are you taking a break? Oh, uh, well, you know what? You're, I think I think you're always waiting to see what the next project's going to be. You never know what's going to spawn something else, just like Danny and Sylvia spawned Fanny. I don't know what the next thing is ever going to be. Right. Obviously, um, I'm always working towards new things and new goals, and I mean, I'd love to be in a Broadway show. I'd love to try another something new, um, but I'll just keep doing this for for as long as um, I'm that's able, true, and yeah. and we'll see what happens next. That's what's always exciting about this kind of career. You never know what's next. You never know. That's yeah, the beauty. Know that's the scary part too. An unpredictable business. It's unpredictable. Unpredictable. That's right. That's why it's so beautiful. How often do you go to the theater? How often do you go to Broadway to see shows? Um, well, Even though they are too expensive. I they mean, are. They are expensive. My hands are on the shot. Okay, let me see <laughs> that out. Okay. Are they expensive? Are they? Yes, they are. They are expensive, especially for performers. Yes. Um, you know, you do what you can do. You, as a performer, you're always trying to see stuff because you want to know what's out there and you want to know who, who's working and who's not and you want to find out what's out there that's right for you that you could possibly do as well in the future or just for just for have, being able to sit back and relax and enjoy something that you're not working in. Uh, but, I mean, with my schedule, it's hard because I'm either performing in a show and then, like I said, I work backstage on Broadway too. That, I want to hear about that. Can we talk about that? Oh, please? sure, sure. All the plays that you've been done before in the past. Yes. Can I bring those names to the table? Well, I, um, 
besides being an actor, I'm a wardrobe dresser wardrobe also does, on Broadway. Uh -huh. It's kind of, you have, as an actor or as anything in the theater, you always have to be a multitasker because that's how you kind of keep working and, and keep honing your craft and you're always staying in the field of where you love. So I, um, right now I work backstage on Billy Elliot on Broadway as a wardrobe dresser. Um, I've worked on Tarzan and Lion King, Curtains and Grease. I've worked on over 10 um, Broadway shows as well while I'm still performing. Um, and people kind of find that hard to believe, but um, you kind of just juggle your schedule well, you and you make it work. you can do it all. You're a superwoman. Uh, why, I don't know why, about why, that. Why, why, <laughs> well, yes, you are. I want to hear about that experience behind the scenes with all this um, craziness. It's... it's being, being behind the scenes is quite a bit different than the way, um, obviously, being on stage. Most people who sit in an audience never know what happens backstage. And that's part of the beauty of it, because you're supposed to think it's just like magic. It's happening out of nowhere. Right. Versus like what I do um, what I do on stage, I mean, obviously, you could come see that. But what I'm doing backstage as a dresser, that's actually somebody who helps the actors to change their costumes as the right. show goes along. They're quick changes. Uh, for instance, an actor comes out in one costume and has 30 seconds to come exit and come back in and something. Whole, um, something new. Uh -huh. So that's kind of where I come in. I'm standing back there with the costume waiting to help them get it on so that they can then run back on stage and, and start performing again. Are they um, nice? Are they, all of my nice. There's no deal. Oh, yeah. There's no hot mama. Oh, oh, I don't know if I can give any of that God. away. Oh, I know. That's what, that's what people want to hear. Those are the secrets. That's the dirty um, secrets. They all were dying to know. Forget oh. about conventional stuff. <laughs> We want to hear the gossip. Oh, I don't know. I don't really have any that that <laughs> big of a dirt. But um, well, everybody's you know, I mean, cool. Everybody's nice. Everyone's good. I mean, it's a team effort. It's like you, you know. It, no, it, let me ask. Do they tip? Well, uh, technically, they should. That's part of just like your you when you're see? Way. Yeah, right. actors, actors. That's technically part of um, an unwritten, not an unwritten rule, but just as a courtesy. If if you're because right. it's just like somebody would would wait on you and uh, for tables or um, things like that. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm my hands. Ginger Rogers, tell him to get your hands on the shot. <laughs> It's very difficult. Well, we like to talk with our hands. We like to talk. We're very Italian. <laughs> we're very Italian. Let me put my vampire look. <laughs> look at that. You like that? I like it too, oh, Ginger Broderick. I need the collar for my dress. You like the collar? That's exciting. But so it pretty much, I mean, it's like... What hours? What days? I mean, it's like, what's, what's the schedule um, like? Well, what's your week? Well, my week is usually, uh, depending, it, it changes week to week. Cause I, I have a different amount of shows as far as where I perform in every week. It does, that changes weekly as well. Um, with uh, with Off-Broadway, sometimes you don't always have eight shows a week. Sometimes you have less than that. So it just depends on the week and it depends on the show. Um, as far as Broadway, Broadway also shows shift and change, but they usually have eight shows a week. Um, so it's kind of a juggling thing. I'm, I'm what's called a swing dresser on Broadway. So I, that's how I can juggle my performing with my dressing. Good so when you. I'm not performing, then I can go work backstage on a show. So I'm constantly working. So I get in my 40-hour work week or, or whatever that but is. But you never stop. Never stop. What do you do for fun? I know the work is fun. And I, 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 I know. I can tell. I can, <laughs> I can sense it. But what do you do for fun? Oh, what do you sleep? do for you? Sleep besides is sleeping? always good. I know, right? We're getting older, and I can appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I like to just relax and, like, a, a, a sit on a beach or, or read a book or, or hang out with some friends or just have a little bit of a social life or just and not think about theater or think about performing or, or those kinds of things. Just kind of get out of the entertainment a little bit and just kind of right. enjoy the fine, like the little things in life that you, you, know, you don't always get to enjoy. And can you be in the moment? Can you live in the present? The actors, it's kind of hard for us to be. Um, Even though they, that's our job to be in the moment, to be in the present, can, can you do that with um, all your work? Uh, I don't know. You, you, I mean, it is, again, and it's juggling. I, I try to because there's you have to to enjoy it. Right. I mean, we always have something to worry about. We always have, oh, is this the show going to close? Are we going to have to find another job? Are we going to work again? Are we going to get right. another job? Of course. Um, Tell me about it. I, I don't think that's, I think that's never ending. But, um, you know, the more the more I do this, the more I say, you know, really just enjoy the moment because that's what it's all about. That's why you work so hard is so you can really just enjoy and, and, and do what you love. Yes. What about California? You're from California. I'm from California originally, but I've been living here for 11 years. 11 years now, so I guess I'm a New Yorker now. Yes, you are. <laughs> for, in L.A., you don't go much at all. Once a year. Once a year. I'm sure my parents who are watching this would love to, for me to come back more often, but it's hard. Of course, so. they miss you. They love yeah, you. It's not yeah. easy to be away from home. Yeah. Well, this is home. 
It, this is home. This, this is, is home. home. I made it home for myself. You did? Yeah. What do you see in the next 10 years? Oh my gosh. Uh, I really just don't know. Um, that's the craziness of my life. Um, I, I don't know where I'll be in, in 10 years. Hopefully uh, the, I'll, have ki I'll have kids. And, and, you want to have kids? Uh, yeah, I'd love to adopt kids. That's, oh, that's a big thing in my, in my life is I've always wanted to adopt kids, so hopefully I can do that. And, and, and get the right guy. Yes. Not does the right, the right guy. guy exist? <laughs> <laughs> Keep but there remains to be seen. But we'll see. Dare to dream. <laughs> we, we have time left, right? I don't have to be concerned about the time. Okay, great. Because you know the show goes so fast. That then you have like two minutes left. I know. Your website. Oh, my website. Yes. Can we talk about that? Yes, of course. I'm taking my hands out of the shot. Um, okay. So I have a website called BroadwayBlogspot.com, and actually yeah. it was started because of the fact that I work on stage and backstage. People were fascinated by the fact how I, I could do both. I was checking out. It's fascinating. Oh, yes. That's, so, what um, that's what we want to see. Yeah. I mean, it's it's kind of like the nitty gritty of the business, um, and basically we're trying to show people who and who are fascinated fascinated by the theater or students who want to get into the theater or people who aspire to be performers or work backstage all the opportunities that are available to them and it's a video based website so it's all video driven so if you go and you can see we have three different series one specifically for people who want to be actors and they can go learn about auditions and go watch me go to an audition and see see how that actually works in New York or, right. or interviewing people That's who sit thing. behind the table yeah for even people who live overseas yeah exactly That's exactly so, because people they see New York differently. When they, when you are away, trust me, this is not Sex of the City. No, not at all. It doesn't exist. I love the show. I love my girls, Kim Cattrall, <laughs> Jessica Parker, Cynthia Nixon, and the other one, the cute one. I forgot. Oh yeah, um, uh, yes, I don't remember. Uh, any but well, well, <laughs> it's a great show. Exactly. But God knows that New York City is not Sex in the City. No, we it's don't, not. We don't, it, it's a different city. Yeah. And actors everywhere, because talent is everywhere. Yeah. Okay, are fascinated by New York. Yes. And they want to see what it's like yeah. to be in this crazy city of exactly. no pity. And that's what we try to show them because and we do. There's do. so many people who move here and have no idea what they're getting into. So that's what we try yeah. to, I mean, it's it's a hard, tough business. It's Are a great kidding? business, but it's tough it's and it's tough. hard. And no, I don't think people realize it. I think people think from an actress perspective, they're going to move to New York and they're going to get on Broadway like two days later and it just no, it doesn't, it doesn't quite happen. work that way. No, so that's what we're doesn't. trying to show them. But it, it does show that, you know, hard work and persistence pays off. So that's Of course, good. of course. And you gotta make do what makes you happy. Exactly. And it's like you said, Sissy, musical comedies, musical. That's yeah. my thing. That's kind of my yeah. That's that's, that's what I love to that's do. That's what you love to do. Yeah. If you can know as soon as you can what you like to do, what's your talent. Yeah. Then you can take it from there. The exactly. Problem is when you're a little lost and you don't know exactly where you're heading. Yes. And you don't know what to do. Like you know, actors, we can I be a little confused. <laughs> it happens to me. Okay. You see how I swing my hands to the shot? <laughs> oh, man, TV's about making adjustments, man. And I can't take direction. If I cannot use my hands, like John Stravin would say, you know, at the actor's studio a long time ago when he seen in Charles, I don't know how long ago, and I look like Lee Grant with this haircut. <laughs> I can't get over it, and no. I know I'm not, I'm not as pretty as she is. <laughs> I look a little bit like Lee Grant, but do not use your hands. Do not use, just express. But you're emoting me, your hands. Okay, let me start. Let's do an acting exercise here. Let me be still. <laughs> oh, man, this is tough. And I thought he was joking when he was giving those notes to the members of the studio. So what about film? Kimberly. Oh, I've done I've done some TV and film. I when I lived in LA, I did quite a bit of TV and film. Um, I would love to do more, but New York is it, New York is in it's quite, so it's 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 much tougher here to it's do much, that. It's, you know what it seems like to me. And uh, just correct me if I'm, I'm mistaken. That stage work somehow is much more accessible than here. Film. Yes, here especially. I mean, I see honestly, and stage work to me is rather much more difficult than film in many ways right. maybe, maybe film is more difficult but stage work is more accessible film you have to wait 10 years yeah. 5 years 7 years to get a film yeah. to get a, a commercial well there's just not that much of it so you right. know it's a lot of people in a very small very small pond very so very small but if you hard. write your own material if you get yourself out there and you start writing your work right. and, and, and if you cannot write just get with those people and Filmmakers, independent right. filmmakers, things are done differently nowadays. You don't need that much money to make a film. Well, you can just put something on the internet, or and you, you can, can do. Yeah, you can. And people will see it. Madonna didn't have Facebook. Right. 
That's true. Cindy Lauper didn't have Facebook when it came out. She was putting flyers all over New York. Right. They didn't have these kind of tools that we have. Right. And they made it big, right. huge. Okay, so it's in somehow we have an easier path to a certain degree. Right, well, as long as you're willing to put yourself out there. I mean, just uh, look at the right. little kid, Justin Justin Bieber. Just He's like the big YouTube sensation. He was famous because he was on but YouTube. He, how many hits? Yeah, I know. Thousands and thousands. So, yeah. Yeah, nobody nobody should get discouraged if that's what they really want. He got that baby face, and he's in the Rolling Stone magazine. <laughs> My God, your life can change so quick, I know, right? I know, and he's, like, really young. And he's so young. He's 10? Yeah. Or 12? I don't know. Or 9. And he's, like, 12. Isn't or, that I sickening think. when you see somebody working so <laughs> <laughs> and I see a kid in the comment in the magazine, I swear to you, you don't get jealous, but oh, I see that face and I said, oh my God, they're so young. Oh, I know. Well. And you know, all these wonderful, talented people yeah, who are true. looking for an opportunity to be seen, that's to be heard. True. And it's just, you really have to really be very strong. Yes. You have to be determined and you have to put your put yourself out there and don't, yes. don't, don't worry and don't about it. don't be afraid. It. Exactly. Don't be afraid. Exactly. Now, what's the biggest misconception about you when you go to an agent? When you what what people what they, what do they, what do they say to you? Oh my gosh, I don't know. Uh, I th I think there's just a, there's a sense which I don't know if I necessarily mind it, especially when I'm playing somebody like Fanny. I, I think there's a there's a there's a what they call typecasting. You know, right. where they kind of just pigeon you in pigeonhole you into a box. Like right. I'm that kind of the quintessential Jewish girl, which I I don't mind actually right. because that is what I do. If sure. you look at my resume. Resume, that's what it that's what's full of but because of that it's per, it's allowed me to do a lot of other things right so I don't know if ne that's necessarily a bad thing um, hopefully you know the things I'm doing now will allow me to branch out and do some different things uh, now right. you know when I when I've shown people that I can handle this and this and a B C D then right. I can do something else so, so what do you would like to do thing. Um, well I would love to be in a Broadway show okay. in, in a, like a leading role in a Broadway what show would be, what would be an ideal play for you an ideal show oh my gosh well Where I with an ideal director. <laughs> oh, well, oh gosh! I'm giving you some homework, Kimberly. <laughs> Besides, Funny Girl, that's coming Besides to Broadway in 2012. <laughs> yeah, and you will be the one throwing baby. the hat in the ring. Um, besides the, all the other girls who are doing that as well. Um, I, I don't know. There's just so many shows that I'd love to do. And all the old school musicals. I think that's what I'm perfect for because I kind of have that traditional brassy belt, and I'm kind of a brassy broad too when I'm on stage. So I guess. Those kinds of things. Just just bringing those old school musicals back to life. On Broadway. Yeah, on Broadway. What about TV? What about film? TV and film would be fantastic. I don't yes. know what what if what will lead. I mean, there's so many TV shows now that are musical driven. Like Glee, right. has, Glee. has Glee has come out. And now we have another show called Smash, and we have all these other new shows that are being developed with um, with musical themes, which I think is great for all of us musical theater performers. Not just for work, but it gets people to come to the theater too. Right. So it keeps it kind of propels everything along. So I think. Right. That's well, really when I see Michael Bloomberg flying. The Spider-Man. <laughs> he was doing a, it was an act that he did maybe two months back, and I checked New York one. I always do. Uh, they had the great uh, show on stage. I, I check it out, but I saw Michael Bloomer like flying, like <laughs> like you yeah, know, like, yeah. you know, he's really trying. Yeah, I mean, well. he's really. Do, I mean. Oh, I'm so rich what can I do <laughs> to entertain myself, you know, but well, at least he's getting people to come to the theater. He's getting people in all reality. He's getting people to go yeah, to the theater. He's that's doing important. his share, and that's important. Yeah. But, like, you go to see on Broadway, you have to go and see off Broadway. Yes. And, to, and go and see all those wonderful yes, shows. Yes, there's so much to so, see. So much. It's not just Broadway. There's so many no. other great things out there. Yes. Exactly. Yes. And bring it to Broadway. And yes. Get all those agents out there. Yes. Tip of advice for any <laughs> actor, Kimberly. What, oh, what, what, thank what, you. What, what's the first thing that you think you can remember that you can say to an actor? Okay, this is... If you're not old, old lady, you get older and you're going to look back in time and say, things that I learned about my business. Oh, wow. I, I, I think it's just if you're passionate about it and you're determined, then I don't be afraid. Just keep 
keep pushing for it. I think that's what I learned is, you know what, despite people saying you can't do it, you can't do it. I if you really love before. it, you yes. keep going and you do everything you can to improve yourself and, and listen to the advice from your teachers and your mentors and your people. Are, surround yourself with people who are really great in the business and who you respect. And, and I think you're going to move forward and you're going to and you're going to do really well for yourself. I, I feel like as long as you're passionate about what you do and you're honest with yourself about what you do, you can you can make it. Yeah, people say, no, you can't. No, you can't. Yeah. No, you can't. No, you can't. Just the more I hear, the more I get like, ah. Right, ah, right. You oh, can't worry that about door. that. No. That's their insecurity. You got to just right. keep going. Mental yeah. garbage. Exactly. What I call it. But somebody exactly. else calls it. I heard that before. Mental garbage. Right? Is it true? When yeah. we think too much, we get kind of down. Yeah, that's true. I call, we? We, we like to call it like the vampires in our the, head. Like yeah, the, the bad, the evil yeah, voices. Yeah, those shadows. Yeah. yeah. No good. You have to clean the house. Yeah. yeah. What are you doing for summer? The 4th of July is coming. I know. I think we're going to watch the fireworks. Are That'll you? be fun. Yeah, we live, Alone live near somebody, the, Kimberly? Oh, I'll, I'll watch it with some of my friends. Oh, come on. Yeah, I know. I'll, 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 I'll get into <laughs> private now. I'm not allowed to get private. <laughs> not not day, your friends. Okay. Friendship is allowed. That's okay. Friendship is good. Well, she was good. That's right. Hey, I'm fine. I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that I want to go to a bar now, Kimberly. And you oh, know really? funny? I don't drink. Oh, yeah. And sometimes I feel like, oh, I feel that I'm... I I want to get a drink. I want to start drinking. But Joey, my husband, says, yes, don't you dare to <laughs> I never got drunk in my life. So oh, really? Never. Wow. Never. Good never for you. got drunk. That's what he says. Good for you. But I feel that I haven't lived in it. Oh, you, you haven't necessarily missed out on anything. I haven't <laughs> We have one minute left, Kimberly. Plug the show, baby. Okay, well, if, if, you, you, want, it. if you want to come see uh, One Night with Fanny Bryce or Danny and Kim Sylvia yeah, off you. Broadway, um, make sure to check out www.stlukestheater.com or telecharge.com for tickets, and please come see um, one of the shows. We'd love to have you there. You see, that was nice and quick <laughs> and beautiful. Where are the credits? Are they there? Yeah, oh, there they are. Thank God we made it happen tonight. <laughs> I'm so excited. Well, guys, I will see you next week. We have fun in the house, as always. We always do. Sometimes we got some technical difficulties that can drive me insane. Mm -hmm. But hey, it's about show business, and we have to pull this off. Bruno, baby, my hair scratched a little bit. I don't know if it's the hairspray or the shampoo or the hair treatment. Baby, it is working. I love you. I love Ginger Broderick, Gloria Messer, Josiane, Charles Casano, Alex de Romero, <laughs> Joe Santana. I love you, baby. I really do. Danny, my boy, in the control room, and Gloria Messer, thank you for helping me tonight. And why I feel like Katie Couric? What is it? It's the shirt, right? Is it vampire style? <laughs> uh, guys, I will see you next week. Thank you for having me. I don't want to go home. This is the sad part, the last three, four, five seconds. And yeah, my hands are the shot again. I, I tell you, to me to do this, you got to tape me on, right on the chair like this. I, I, I cannot stop using my hands. <laughs> You're asking the impossible. And the lighting is good and rich. Pull it up with the lighting. Thank you very much. The man who's taking care of that trash, thank you. I don't know your name. <laughs>